I guess I'll do one more clip before we get to the top. <sighs> Remember, you're going to Mount Low. So the trail comes up to this, this junction. Make sure you turn hard right. And this will be the spur to get you up to the top. This will take you down and down. Huh. The tree actually grew around this old metal, old metal sign. Huh. Well, there's the low Markham saddle right there. And you can see the ridge line you got to follow to get up to Mount Markham. Starts off, gets pretty steep, goes over a small hump, and it goes over a little mini bump, and then it goes up steep again, and then it goes real steep, and then it starts flattening out as you get much higher up, and then it's just a, it's a ridge line walk. The only caveat is just watching where you step because of rocks all over the ground. That's the only caveat. So you just got to make sure. Hmm. I almost always get a runny nose when I go hiking. I don't know why. I think it would be the cooler, the cooler weather, but it's it's only a little on the cool side today. So just remember, when you come back, come back to where that little old sign is and that big metal sign half grown around by the tree. Just make sure you take that hard left. You follow it all the way down to where it meets the Mount Low Road. And you just go from there. Get back on the low Mount Low Railway Road. Or the old fire road. Go through the Mueller Tunnel. It'll let you out right near, right by Eaton Saddle, right where you parked. So just remember, it's almost not going to bother filming over here, but I figured there might be people who are new to hiking in this area. So anybody watching this who might be new should be aware of turns and junctions. So I feel that it's important for me to film segments around major junctions and intersections. Because, yes, I like this to be entertaining and interesting, but I also, also want my hiking videos to be helpful, at least helpful, in if anybody wanted to do the hike I did, do the four, the four peak hike today, would know... Okay, this is a trail junction. This is a trail head. Okay, this is where I need to park. Or the area near where I need to park. This is the trail head. This is the junction to here, to there. I do find it pretty important that I take the time and also point those things out to also make my videos try to make them as informative as possible to some people who might not be familiar with the area. Again, it's no substitute for common sense and studying maps beforehand to f get yourself familiarized on screen or on paper what the area looks like. There's never really a good substitute for proper planning. That's what I say. I love to look at Google Earth and read topo maps, especially use the topo map on, map on Peak Bagger. Because the Peak Bagger 
topo map. You can zoom in, zoom out. It'll show you where certain peaks are located, whether they're random peaks, unofficial peaks, or full-blown big-ticket peaks. Anything from peak 5896 near Chilau to Santiago Peak in the San Dianas to San Gorgonio Mountain in the San Bernardino Mountains. So you can always get a zoom in on where your peak is. Look at the elevation contour. That'll give you that'll give you some indication of how steep the hike might be and how challenging, how long it might be, how much elevation gain you're going to be dealing with. So it's always good to familiarize yourself with a topo map because those lines, those lines that go around everything are contours. And also be familiar with the the intercontour interval. The contour interval is actually a better way to say it. Because a lot of maps it'll be 20 feet, some maps it might be 100 feet, and some might be 200 feet, some of it might be 40 feet. You got darker lines, darker, wider lines, and lighter, narrower lines. The darker lines are major elevation intervals, and the narrower, lighter ones are intermediate intervals. But to go from a light a light one to a light one is the same as going from a light one to a dark one because it's the same interval. So the interval between wider darker lines is going to be much more significant because you're going to have all the little narrower lighter colored contour lines in between them. But like I said, contour between dark lines will be significantly more than between light lines and between a light line and a dark line. But just rest assured, a contour interval between a light intermediate contour and let's just say the next contour is a dark one, a major one, it's still the same as if it were between the light and a light. So a lot of maps use 40 feet. A lot of maps use 40 feet contour intervals. But that's not always the case, so it's always good to know. So what you can do, if you're curious, is you can look at the interval between the darker contours. For instance, like you have a 2,000 foot contour and you have a 3,000 foot contour. What you could do is you know that that is a thousand feet elevation change. So if you're not sure what the intermediate lines are, just count how many intermediate lines there are between the 2,000 foot and 3,000 foot contour. Divide it by a thousand. So if you have five lines of contour between Two and three thousand feet. If you have five intermediate contours, you're gonna have a thousand divided by five. So just think of it that way, and that'll give you 200 feet between each intermediate. But usually, they're usually it's contour of 200, a dark, large contour of 200, like 34, like, for instance, 22, 24, 26, 28, and 3,000. So you'll see dark contours for all those. But, you'll have some lighter contours in between. Like, for instance, between 2,000 feet and 2,200 feet, which is a 200 foot interval. If you have five of those, they're going to be in increments of 40 feet. 
So just be aware. It just takes a little bit of math if you're not too used to it. I'll see you at the top.